Greetings, my little lovelies. I hope I find you all well. So, I'm sat, slobbering on my settee last night, watching the TV, when this article comes on about the curse of the crying boy painting, and I remember that I had one of those when I was a kid, hanging in my living room. So I thought, right, I'll go on the internet and have a little look about it, and see what I can find. And what I found was quite interesting. The Crying Boy was a series of paintings of cheerful boys painted by an Italian artist, Giovanni Gragolin. Mm, my Italian needs brushing up. Who was also known as Bruno Amadi. It is alleged that various altered versions of the Crying Boy painting were distributed throughout the 1950s and the following years. But it is believed that the paintings were jinxed. According to urban legend, the artist fled to Spain after the orphanage he painted was gutted in a mysterious fire. He worked in a post-Second World War Venice and used to churn out paintings of crying boys for the tourists. Amadio, under the name of Giovanni, painted as many as 65 children, boys with teary eyes looking straight at you. These paintings highly influenced people and touched them. The year was 1985 when disturbing news related to the paintings spread like fire in a daily newspaper. The newspaper had printed a piece on the painting entitled Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy. It was regarding a house fire in Rotherham of a couple Ron and Mary Hall. The blazing fire brought down their house, with the fire originating from an unattended frying pan. Everything in the house was destroyed, but only one item survived. It was the painting of the crying boy that fell face down and was slightly charred in the fire. The report also talked about how in the area this was not the first instance. In many of the fires in the neighbourhood, despite everything burning down, the only piece that survived in the household was a copy of the crying boy painting. When the report suggested that the firefighters thought the painting to be cursed, and the newspaper's very large audience were agreeing with it. Alan Wilkinson, a fire station officer, had reportedly logged as many as 50 fires where the crying boy painting was found. People started associating the fires with the curse of the crying boy painting. Public panic became real after another big fire occurred at an Italian restaurant. The newspaper requested that all its readers send in their crying boy paintings to the office. They organised a mass bonfire of the paintings which at first were hard to burn, but later they succumbed to it. Another interesting story around the crying boy painting is that of a boy in the painting itself. It is believed that his name was Don Bonilio, an orphan whom Amadio had adopted. But the child had problems. He was believed to be cursed and was called the devil child as he had seen the death of his parents in a house fire which happened during the Second World War. The local priest had warned against adopting him, but Amadio didn't listen. They lived happily together, but one day his studio and his apartment both caught fire. Amadio then blamed Don for it and threw him out of the house. Years later, during 1976, a report about a car crash and a burnt body caught people's attention. It is believed that the body had burnt beyond recognition. But in the glove compartment of the car, the driver's license, which was not destroyed in the car's fire, it read Don Bonilio. After the mass bonfires, the stories of the cursed fires started to die down. But still to this date, the curse was neither proven or denied. Were those paintings really cursed? Well, a chap called Steve Punt, a noted comedian and 
Akhtunov, investigated the case of the Crying Boy painting and the curses related to it. The investigations were carried out on a show called Punt P.I. Though the show had a comic outline, Punt certainly reached a conclusion which was followed by investigations at the building research establishment. It was concluded that the prints were put through a fire retardant. It was further revealed that the painting would fall down with the face on the floor due to the fact that the thread holding the painting would burn first in case of a fire. This protected the painting. But like I said earlier, the curse was neither proven nor denied. Make up your own mind, folks. It's quite interesting. Especially as I do remember as a child having that painting on my living room wall. I can remember it. I actually hated it. I actually hated it. I really hated it. Of what my parents' taste was a god among us. Now, I've just been chatting to Johnny, and um, I told him I was doing this uh, narration, and he reminded me that um, his mother used to have uh, one of these pictures hanging on the wall, and Johnny told me they also had a fire in the kitchen, which I totally forgot about. Um, and that was down to a chip pan, um, again, a frying pan, um, going up in flames, so... That's quite weird, isn't it? Thank you, Johnny, for reminding me. Um, I should have remembered, but my mind's gone. I'm getting old. I've been getting old since the day I was born, baby. Yeah! <laughs> anyway, that's it from me for now. Hope you enjoyed this little, uh, little story. I'll catch you again next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.